Hi there, and welcome back to Education Closet On Demand. I'm your host, Susan Riley, the founder of EducationCloset.com and an arts integration specialist. And today I want to talk about something that I'm really passionate about, which is professional development. I mean, after all, it is really kind of the mission of our site is to provide integrated and innovative professional development for educators. And I have an interesting email that I received last week that I really kind of want to dive into because I think it's something that so many of us as educators struggle with, and I want to talk about that a little bit today. So Carol from Wisconsin writes, Dear Susan, I really want to pr participate in meaningful professional development, but I don't want to spend an arm and a leg on it. Why should I have to pay for professional development that um, others receive either A, for free, or B, in other industries don't need to pay for at all? How do I go about getting professional development that matters for me without having to invest a lot of money? Thanks so much. This is a fantastic question, and I have to tell you um, that it's something we struggle with and work on all the time. And here's a couple of things that I think about when it comes to professional development. First of all, I think everything that you do in professional development should be meaningful for you. In fact, I'm an advocate that when you go to a conference, if you're going to any kind of session or coaching or even taking online classes, it doesn't matter. Whatever you're using for professional development, if it's not meaningful for you, I'm an advocate of not wasting your time or the time of the presenters. I would leave um, because your time is precious. You want every second to count. That's number one. So I truly believe that no matter what field you're in in terms of education, if you're an arts educator, if you're a classroom teacher, if you're a science teacher, whatever it is, if you're a leader, you need to have professional development that is truly meaningful to your practice. I understand that. And part of what we do at Education Closet is provide that kind of professional development. We hope for people who are really seeking out information about arts integration and STEAM. Um, and 80% of what we provide on Education Closet is absolutely free. And I do that on purpose because I think that the internet acts as the great equalizer when it comes to quality professional development. There's a lot of junk out there, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, I do believe that people who are isolated, who have no resources, or have resources available but they're not as meaningful for their practice, deserve to have professional development that is free to them, that they can receive, that everybody gets the same quality of professional development. Totally passionate about that. But here's the other thing that I know for sure. There are some things that you need to pay for, that you need to invest in. And yes, I understand all about money. And it is a touchy subject. Trust me, I get it. Um, I, who has $1,000, $2,000 to spend on going to a national conference? I mean, that's tough. And yes, there are other industries out there that pay for their people to go for these professional learning um, experiences. And it feels unfair, right? Except that we are educators, and educators are constant learners. And so there are some things that I have found that I want to invest in, because if I invest in it, it saves me time and aggravation of trying to pull it all together. So I'd rather pay for some things in professional development that I feel are worth it and invest that money because number one, it will save me time, but number two, it holds me accountable. If it's something that I am passionate about and I am committed to, I want to be held accountable that I'm going to take what I've learned from that and put it into practice. And like it or not, I have found that when I don't pay for something, I don't take it as seriously. I don't feel like it's as high a value as something that I had to pay for because I'm not personally invested in it. So to answer your question, here's what I suggest. I always suggest always constantly learning, no matter what. So if that means going out and searching out free resources like Education Closet, like other sites that are out there who are doing amazing work and sharing that for free, do it. Be a constant learner. Model that for your students. But if there's something out there that costs some money, 
you need to think about the pros versus con and weigh those options. Here's my litmus test. Is it reasonably priced? If it's $2,000, I don't have $2,000 to spend, I'm not going to put it on my credit card to pay for it for 12 months. It's just not worth that to me. Um, but if it's $200, maybe even up to $500, depending on what it is. I mean, is it a course that I have constant access to? Is it a one-time day? You have to weigh a lot of different factors. But if it's within your budget, that's number one. Is it within my budget? Then I gotta ask myself, is this something that is gonna be meaningful to my practice as an educator and is going to have a direct impact on my students? If the answer is no, I don't pay for it and I don't invest in it. But if the answer is yes, then I gotta go back, look at my budget, ensure that I am financially sound to pay for it. I understand that it's gonna be worth my time and have a direct impact on my students. Then I can say, okay, I'm gonna invest in this and really take it seriously and push forward in it. Number three, I limit myself to once or twice a year because depending on the, the amount, if it's $99 and I do a couple of those, okay, I might add a couple more here and there. But if I'm investing between two and $500 in something, I'm limiting myself to that one, once or twice a year because that does two things for me. One, it makes my budget happier. But two, it also forces me to really narrow in and decide what is it that I am passionate about and wanna focus on this year. It doesn't allow me to kind of spread all over the place and invest here, there, and everywhere and feel like I'm overwhelmed and that I'm losing money and that it's not effective and I resent it. Those are no feelings that anybody <laughs> wants to have. So ensure that you've got those three pieces in check. Is it within your budget? Is it gonna be meaningful and valuable to you and have a direct impact on your students? And is it within the amount of professional development that you have set aside for yourself once or twice a year? I consider professional development a non-negotiable. I consider that I need to have professional development every year in order to grow as an educator. And so I'm willing to invest a small portion of what I do in that because that is my personal meaning. If you're not there yet, do as much as you can for free, and when you get to the ability to be able to invest in it, no matter what, pick things that are gonna be meaningful to you. I hope this has helped, and I can't wait to hear your comments below. Um, please comment right below the video or on our site at educationcloset.com. Speaking of professional development, and free. We have a free video series kicking off this week. It's a three-part video series all about arts integration. I highly suggest you go ahead and take advantage of it because in this professional development, I am revealing things about my own personal journey in arts integration as well as some of the things that I typically save for my consulting and coaching sessions because I'm truly passionate about ensuring everyone has an equitable playing field when it comes to arts integration. So if you're interested in that, hit that website that's across your screen right below, and we'll see you over there for that free video training series. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great week.